Now that all the track beds glued down, we can focus on the section that will be underneath the tunnel. We decided to glue down the track for this section because once the mountain is made, we won't have access to fix any shifting. The rest of the track is pinned to make adjustments. To make our mountain and tunnel, we used half inch foam. We built a supporting wall for the tunnel roof. We have an access panel at the back to get any derailed trains and the tunnel portals are glued into place. To make the mountain walls, we just drew some freehand contour lines and cut them with a knife. We then used hot glue, glued the two pieces together and cut out an access hole. We then added some small supports for the tunnel roof, shown here, here, and here. And this one I painted grey just in case someone looks inside the tunnel and sees the wall. To make the roof for the tunnel, I took a piece of paper, outlined the tunnel roof, trace it onto a piece of styrofoam and then cut it out and place it onto the tunnel. I trimmed the excess styrofoam off the tunnel roof to make it neat and clean by first tracing it with a red pencil. Next I decided to sand the edges for a nice neat clean look but then realized mm. no one's going to see this once it's covered. Next I used my brand new rail pal to clean all the track that's going to be inside the tunnel because once covered this track will never see the light of day. Using hot glue, we glued the roof down to the tunnel, and that completes the shell. There is one thing we did before gluing the roof down for the tunnel, and that is we created a door for our access hole. We didn't want light or sound to escape from the tunnel, so we covered it up. Using a, a scrap piece of styrofoam, we made a little latch. We pinned the latch where we wanted it with little pins, and then we drilled the hole in the middle of the latch through the access door. We also drilled a hole in the middle of the handle, which will be on the outside of the access door. We used a two inch bolt, and some washers and nuts to complete this project. After a lot of experimenting, trial and error, I found this method to be the best. We, um, we hot glued the bolt to the piece of styrofoam, the handle, so that when the handle turned, the bolt will turn with it. Hey, put dogs in the train room. So now when the handle turns, the bolt turns as well. We placed a washer on the bolt that's on the handle, put it through the access door, and then put another washer on top of that. Next, we screwed a nut onto the bolt. So now when the handle turns, the nut and bolt turns as well. We then slipped on the latch and put a final bolt on top of that, tightened it just hand tight so then when you turn the handle the latch turns as well. And then we tested it. Remove the door and fix the rail trains. Unfortunately, the roof of our tunnel is a little too low, so we had to trim the latch. Which is not a big deal because no one's going to be on the inside pushing the door out. So when the handle's up, you can't push the door in. Turn the handle, remove the access door, and fix any derail trains. This whole process may not be necessary, but it was fun to do, and uh, I think it worked out pretty well. We used the following to make our mountain. Plaster cloth, scissors, newsprint, spray bottle, a bowl full of water, and a lot of patience. First we took our newsprint, or you can use newspaper, crumpled up little balls, and made our the forms for the mountain and mountainside. 
We then used the newsprint to cover our tracks so that they wouldn't get dirty. Next, we cut our plaster cloth into strips so they're easier to use. But in fact, we found that as we went along, the smaller the piece of plaster cloth we had, the easier it was to work with. We wet the cloth, draped it over the roll up pieces of paper, and hoped for the best. And this is the result. We also covered all of the styrofoam inclines and risers with plaster cloth, just as Woodland Scenics suggests to do. You'll notice my brother is using his fingers to spread the plaster all the way around. This way we cover all the holes in the plaster cloth. Once this dries, we can glue down the rest of the foam bed. One thing we noticed with the plaster cloth, when we cut it, it left all these little strings. So just be careful of that. I found this little shack from our old layout, so I want to do a scene on the hill. I traced the base of the shack onto a piece of styrofoam. I cut it out. I wrapped the styrofoam in plaster cloth. And I built a, up kind of a retaining wall on the hill. And here's the final product. Well, after many hours and three rolls of plaster cloth, my brother and I are very pleased with the final outcome. We're especially pleased with this rock face we made here with the plaster cloth. It turned out very natural and we can't wait to paint it.